Of the men, there was no sign at first. As they searched, one nurse shifted a bed aside only to shriek and nearly trip across one of the sunken, reeking teeth? depressions on the floor. In a tight, perfect spiral were what appeared to be hundreds of teeth resting uh. neatly. All right, uh, we're back with more SCP. And this one is the young man origin of SCP-106. SCP animation by SCP animated tales from the foundation. Let's start. Nobody could like Corporal Lawrence. That's not to say that nobody tried or that he was somehow unfriendly. Merely that he was one of those few that seemed to be wired differently. Uh, he's a weirdo. However, in the trenches of World War I, normalcy was at best a relative term. Lawrence fought, listened to orders, and didn't disrupt the other soldiers. And that was all that was required. So what if the people felt increasingly uncomfortable around him? In a place where the baseline of concern was the flesh rotting off your bones while you were still alive, a little personality conflict ranked several levels below a paper cut. Mm -hmm. Lawrence, for his part, dealt with it as he always had, that is to say, remained totally unaware of the avoidance. The same way a man blind from birth cannot mourn the memory of color, Corporal Lawrence couldn't bemoan a lack of company. He was quiet, as he had nobody to talk to, and still, as he had nothing to do for long stretches of time. So, the enemy trench, pal? less than a mile away, had gone <laughs> silent for several days. This amplified the unease that seemed to radiate off of Lawrence like heat waves. The worst part was that there was no distinct reason to dislike the corporal. He was a plain man, average height, average build, bland of voice and action. Nobody could recall him raising his voice in joy or mm. anger. He did have the occasional odd mannerisms, however. Normal. He tended to stare a beat or two longer than was acceptable at people. He rarely slept as well, and bunkmates said he would mumble in his sleep almost no, constantly. He's a weirdo. Definitely the weirdo. content of those nocturnal ramblings when they could be understood were often odd and potentially unsettling. One private moved to another barracks when he heard the name of his daughter pass Corporal Lawrence's lips, followed by a bubbling muffled giggle. <laughs> What the? Oh yeah, that's. It was strongly theorized that he was sent over the trench by his commanders more out of a desire to have him away than for his minimal combat skill. He and fourteen of his fellows were sent across the nightmarishly scarred waste of the no man's land between the trenches to scope out the enemy trench and secure it if possible. Many seemed to hope that Lawrence would have the opportunity to prove his devotion to his country by making the ultimate sacrifice for it. It was oh, while he was gone that someone started asking questions. Nobody remembered him ever talking of home. No sweet-smelling letters came, no soggy, dirt-streaked letters left. Questions started to float among even the higher levels of the command. Nobody was able to actually find his station orders. He'd come in with a squad of reinforcements transferred from France, but there was no mm. paperwork. The rest of the reinforcement squad had never seen the man before he'd been lumped in with them He's the night before million. the trip, along with the snips and scraps of other squads decimated by the Germans. But nobody Whispers likes him, so he's standing up. The of the he's standing being up. A curse. Like. Nearly every man who'd shared a bunkhouse with him had gotten trench foot, and the rooms he haunted always seemed to smell more musty and sickly sweet, even for the trench. Does it not exist? The men sent over the no man's land with Corporal Is this Lawrence like a made up, cared for none of this. Made up by the soldiers? Just another man among many, all with death certificates awaiting a stamp that could fall at any moment. They moved fast and low, from crater to crater, slipping over slick mud and barbed wire, the only thing that seemed to grow in that blasted waste. Charging the last spur and into the trench, they were greeted not with the harsh bark of German orders and rifles, but a dense, closed silence. Preparing for ambush, the men started to filter out into the tunnels and halls of the trench. The men, already nervous, were not calmed by their investigation. The trenches stank of mold, sweat, and a thin undercurrent of rotten fruit. A vile, cloying slime seemed to have pooled in every divot and crack, sticky as glue and itchy on the flesh. <gasps> Private Dixon Ew. found the first body and managed to cry out before vomiting. They knew it had been a man only because nothing else of that size could have been there. It lay on the floor of a barracks. The entire floor. Mm. 
The flesh of it had been smeared somehow, spread like butter over the rough dirt floor. Bones, already looking pitted and rotten, stuck out at random angles like dead trees in a still swamp. The skull rested on one of the highest bunks facing the doorway. More remains were found, each seemingly more unsettling and strange than the last. Unfathomable horrors were discovered one after the next, sending men retching and running from the trench. Corporal Lawrence was the first to find the hole. It was small, no more than four feet across. Don't go in there. It seemed to be the accidental uncovering of a natural chamber, the empty blackness of it defying investigation. Nah, don't go in there, Private bro. Private Dixon, recovered and blessedly numb from his previous oh, ordeals, you, saw the corporal prod the edge with his boot. Then crouched to peer in, then suddenly slide in head first before the private could so much as utter a shout of question. When questioned He's later, gone, bro. he could provide little illumination as to what happened over the two minutes Corporal Lawrence spent in the hole. He could see nothing. The light of a torch seemingly gobbled up a few feet into that dense blackness. There were sounds, the rustle of movement over loose stone or rubble, an odd liquid shifting, a dry rustle that made him think of insect husks. As he shouted for aid, there was a sudden upwelling of a repulsive stench, and his fellow soldiers found him retching helplessly beside the hole when they came around the turn. It was as they rushed to Private Dixon's aid that the hand emerged from the hole. They stopped and raised rifles as one body, roaring for the owner of that pale, trembling hand to identify himself. As they watched, another yeah, hand joined turned first, into a zombie. followed by the pale, shivering head of Corporal Lawrence. He was streaked and smeared with a tarry black ooze, hacking and coughing thinly as he hauled his body up beside that of the gasping private. As they moved to help the man, the corporal vomited up a heavy stream of the same repulsive slime that coated his body in smears and globs. They were hesitant to touch him, finally doing so after the seemingly endless river of grime stopped pouring from him. He was insensible, eyes rolling and wide, body as limp as a boned fish. Mm. The men fled the trench with all the speed they could muster. Bro, Half don't touch him, bro. They ran with no thought of cover or death, only escape. They crossed in record time. He's infected, into their bro. Home trench, gasping and shivering. One man, known to have bludgeoned a German to death with a brick, curled on the floor in a sobbing heap. Oof. The commanders moved quickly, isolating the men and trying to calm the most lucid for a report. What spilled out would have been immediately dismissed as lies and hallucination were it not for the earnest, pleading stares of those reporting. Command calmed them with explanations of battle fatigue and strange gas weapon tests, and shared silent, focused stares as the cowed men were ushered out. Corporal Lawrence had little to uh -oh. report. Of his time in the hole, he could or would say little. He stated that he had slipped and fallen into what may have been some long blocked underground pool or perhaps a buried latrine. Of the sounds and smells reported by the private, he had nothing to say, only that he had struggled a short time then managed to get back out just as the men arrived. Uh -oh. Truly, he seemed none the worse for wear. In fact, he seemed in better spirits than many had remembered ever seeing him, favoring the commanders with a wide, giddy smile as he was dismissed with a warning He got the Joker gas, the bro. Not one man from that trench no. survived the Great War, although few died in battle. A wave of sickness took the trench a few days after Private Dixon's death. It seemed to eat the flesh like acid, men waking to find Told you he was infected. flesh eaten down to the bone, oozing and blackened. Corporal Lawrence was remanded to a French mental ward, transferred after several complaints from the hospital proper where he was first sent. It seemed his behavior hinted at a growing mental imbalance, the corporal would ran quietly to the other patients, whispers about endless halls, pursuits in the dark, flesh laid out like pages of a book. It was dismissed as war fatigue. He vanished several times from the ward, only to appear several hours later as if nothing had happened. When pressed, he would begin to sing, My Bonnie Lies Over the Sea in an endless monotone until the doctors left exasperated. A stale, musty foulness seemed to sit in the air wherever he stayed, and incidents of infection and the strange, consuming sickness that had beset his home trench seemed to follow him like a cloud. Numerous attempts were made to transfer the man, only to be met with bureaucratic confusion. No records were mm. found of the man, no entry papers, commendations, or incidents, not even a birth certificate. Through it all, he sat for hours on end, 
cross-legged on his bed, occasionally humming tunelessly or rambling off the names of his wardmates between short bubbling giggles. Yeah. Corporal Lawrence and Bro, look at that face, bro. Nah. And 18 men vanished one November night between a five-minute nurse rotation at three in the morning. The room reeked of rust, oil, mold, and sweet rot. Thick black swaths of crumbling ooze coated the beds and several of the walls, Ugh. patches of it smearing and eating into the floor. Of the men, there was no sign at first. As they searched, one nurse shifted a bed aside only to shriek and nearly trip across one of the sunken, reeking teeth? depressions on the floor. In the tight, perfect spiral were what appeared to be hundreds of teeth resting Ugh. neatly on the floor. After counting, they accounted for the total of all the teeth of every living soul in that ward, but one. The corporal was never found, nor were the men. The incident was swallowed by the constant barrage of horrors from the front and forgotten with ease. Still they came. Stories of strange deaths, of disappearing men, found days later alive but broken and twisted beyond comprehension. Stories of estranged, dark figures stalking the bomb-riddled towns of Europe. Yes. All right, this one's crazy. That one's cra That one was crazy. Oh man, that one was creepy. Okay. That was the young man. Origin of SCP-106. SCP animation. Yeah, that one. I think he got that. Not the the. The Joker gas, bro. Sounds like the Joker gas. All right. 